Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a little bit of that upcoming severe weather as well as the past severe weather we've had, but especially I want to talk about an upcoming big, big cooldown that is coming up uh, that is going to last quite a while here in the month of May. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know when do you think the temperatures are going to return to warmer temperatures here for the month of May? Or do you think we're just going to stay with a cold pattern pretty much through most of the month? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at those storm reports from two days ago. I showed you this in yesterday's video. This is May 2nd. We had 25 tornadoes, unfortunately, especially there in Mississippi. We had a lot of tornado reports uh, and a lot of damage done. But yesterday, which was an enhanced risk, had 20 tornadoes. So we've had back-to-back -back days uh, with just major tornado days, especially considering it was a slight risk and then an enhanced risk. That is just so uh, surprising to see this many tornadoes. And now, today, we have an enhanced risk, again, as you can see here on the map here, from Louisiana and through a little bit of Arkansas there, and then in through Mississippi, Alabama, a little bit of Florida, a little bit of Georgia, and then a little bit of Tennessee as well. So we're really keeping our fingers crossed that it won't be a big tornado day, but we want to be mindful because of the fact that it seems like Given how the past two severe weather days have gone, this one might overperform as far as tornadoes go as well. So we're going to want to really watch this closely. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a moderate risk in the middle there actually as well. Uh, so today could be the biggest day of the three, unfortunately. So please pay attention all day. Please, please, please. Now, let's take a look at those individual outlooks real quick. I promise we're going to get into that. A uh, big cooldown soon. Now, the day one wind outlook, we have a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, a 15% chance there in the yellow, a 30% chance there in the red, and then a 45% chance there in that pink color there for Mississippi and a bit of Alabama as well. So a lot of damaging wind is possible throughout the day today. Uh, we have our hail outlook, which we have a 5% chance there in the green, and then a 15% chance there in the yellow. Finally, for that tornado risk, we have two green areas, which is our 2% regions. One there for Virginia and Maryland, where we had a tornado yesterday, actually. And then one down there for the deep south and the southeast. And that one also has a 5% chance there within Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida as well, within 25 miles of a given location. So we have all three severe weather threats possible. Uh, but we want to especially pay attention uh, to the wind, obviously. There's a very high chance of wind. Uh, and then, obviously, those tornadoes. Uh, since there is a chance, uh, you know, we want to really watch that closely. With the way the past two days have gone, like I said, uh, you really just, you kind of are, I tend to believe that it could overperform uh, just based on how the conditions have been. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're finally going to talk about those upcoming temperatures, uh, finally. Now, here's how the past seven days have gone. And as you can see, above normal temperatures, pretty much for most of the United States, outside of the very, very northern portions of the United States there. So for portions of North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, a little bit of New York and New England there included as well, maybe even Washington. But then we also have another cold area down there for the four corner states and a little bit of Texas. But outside of that, you can see it has been a very warm week for like probably 90% of the country, as you can see. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at those uh, individual days. So this is for kind of this morning slash last night to so the past 12 hours or so. You can see there is a big cooldown already underway for the central United States. But the eastern half of the country is very warm compared to normal. For the most part, there is a few select regions that are a little bit below average. But outside of those very select regions, it is for the most part very, very warm here in the eastern half of the country. Now, as we take a look at just the entire day tomorrow, you can see that that cooldown will move a little bit further eastward. Another thing I want to mention here, look at the western United States. We have a positive PNA very, very uh, much so developing there, and that is going to be what mostly causes this cooldown to head further east. So I want you guys to know that uh, that is a big, big reason for why this cooldown is occurring. And then you can see in the eastern I would say fourth or eighth of the country there for the East Coast, basically. We do have a little bit of warmth still around there for Wednesday and through uh, a little bit of Thursday. Now, as you can see, by the time we reach Thursday, May 6th, 
that warm up for the East Coast comes to an end, and that cool down basically entirely engulfs the eastern two thirds of the country, leaving a very strong positive PNA out there in the West. So that is a main driver here in this pattern. We haven't had much of a negative or a positive AO or NAO, which is our Arctic Oscillation, then North Atlantic Oscillation. It has been a PNA driven uh, a pattern we've been in for like about a month or so, a Pacific North American Oscillation, that is, by the way, PNA. Uh, so let's just go ahead and move this towards Friday. And as you can see, that cooldown becomes even more potent for the eastern United States. A lot of those greens showing up there, uh, indicating the very far below normal temperatures, obviously, for a lot of the eastern half of the country. Still warmer for the western half, but you can see that positive PNA. The west coast has become a little bit cooler. So that spells kind of an end to this potent cooldown. Uh, and one could only hope for sure. But this is already by May 7th, so we're... Taking a look at a good chunk of the month is going to be below normal temperatures. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards Saturday, May 8th, and just take a look at what this cooldown is expected to do. All right, now here we are taking a look at, this is going to be Saturday, May 8th, and as you can see, a lot of those greens are still around. Uh, the western United States is kind of half and half. You can see the southwest is warmer than normal, but the northwest is actually colder than normal. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a neutral PNA, if you will. Uh, that's not really going to be driving the pattern anymore. But the one thing we know is there's usually a lag. So oftentimes you will see, for instance, um, you know your PNA was positive. That's what caused the cooldown to come into the eastern United States. That positive PNA has already died down. Uh, but we're going to see that cooldown in the east. That was a result of the positive PNA. Uh, it's going to stick around for two or three days after that positive PNA is completely said and done. I hope that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now what we're going to do here is take a look at Sunday, May 9th. And as you can see, the northern half of the country for the most part is very far below normal temperatures. And then the southern half of that country is looking at above normal temperatures. And this is a pattern uh, that could lead to a lot of severe weather if there is a storm uh, in the area. Obviously, this is pretty far out, so it's going to be pretty hard to say. Uh, but if there is a storm in the area, that could lead to a pretty bad severe weather situation. Uh, typically, that is how it goes, in my opinion. Let's just move towards May 10th. And as you can see, that cooldown moves even further south, which could be in the form of a cold front, which again, could cause some more severe weather to be possible. But generally, the central United States, especially the north central uh, and the central central United States, uh, is going to be dealing with very far below normal temperatures. And that even extends in through the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as well. You can see there is a bit of a southeast ridge that's going to possibly bring some warmer than normal conditions there for the southeast and a little bit more of the east coast. Uh, but generally, that's not going to be enough to, to uh, compete with this cooldown as we have another positive PNA kind of developing here, uh, which should shove that cooldown further east. And by the time we take a look at May 11th, Tuesday, you can see that does take place. That positive PNA develops itself even further. That southeast ridge kind of comes to an end. Then that cooldown moves further south and further east. Uh, bringing generally colder than normal conditions for most, if not all, of the eastern half of the country. Now, by time, we're taking a look at about Wednesday, May 12th. You can see that is mostly, this is very clearly a, a ridge in the west, trough in the east pattern here that we're taking a look at uh, by that point. And then Thursday, May 13th, as you can see, uh, still the same story there by that point. So there is no end in sight to this pattern, and we could be in this colder pattern for the east all the way through the halfway mark of May, unfortunately. Uh, I know a lot of people hate a cold um, springtime because they just are kind of ready for summer to occur. That's kind of me as well. Uh, and especially it's aggravating when we've had a warm winter. Uh, but this winter was actually quite decent as far as snow and cold is concerned, so I'm not really complaining uh, too much. Usually you would see a warm winter and then a very cold spring and it's like, where were you at for March or sorry, <laughs> December, January, February, where was this cold air at? Uh, and then it, you know, you get a cold April and May. It's just ironic. Uh, so anyway, for today's confidence tab, uh, we're at a five out of six. We have talked about some longer range things, but generally we are very confident that this cooldown will occur. Uh, for the most part, there is a chance that it's much less potent than we're calling for. So that's why it's not a six out of six. It's a five out of six, but that's a very slim chance. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday for today's severe weather event, do you think we will get a moderate risk or stay at an enhanced risk? And this was 50-50. I had quite a few people saying staying enhanced, quite a few people saying it'll be a moderate risk. Jonathan Slack or Schlack said, 
I think we will end up with a moderate risk, and I think there is a good chance of that, maybe 50-50 at this point, so I couldn't really choose which side to go with. So I picked Jonathan Schlack, so good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron out of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Palemo, Adam S., Larry the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Ada Mattis. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Pitalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Kali, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you'd like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, for today's channel membership highlight of the day, I would like to thank our weather dog... Weather Top Dog, Hair Farms 1, and our super fan, Phoenix Nibbets. If you would like to join this, that will be next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to like and comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, that always helps so, so much. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.